One of the biggest problems in people with thyroid and autoimmune thyroid conditions is hair loss. This affects people with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, as well as those with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease. And so the goal of this presentation is to discuss a few different ways to potentially help people with these conditions who are experiencing hair loss. Many times balancing the thyroid hormone levels will help to stop or slow down the hair loss. While the goal of a natural treatment protocol is to restore the person's thyroid health, it does take time to accomplish this. And so it's common for someone with a hyper, hypothyroid condition to take synthetic or natural thyroid hormone, while people with hyperthyroid conditions may choose to take antithyroid medication, such as methimazole or PTU. In either of these cases, sometimes taking the medication will help with the thyroid hair loss, while other times it won't make much of a difference. However, it's not uncommon for some people to lose a lot of hair while this has taken place. Either way, when hair loss is the result of an imbalance of the thyroid hormone levels, then the ultimate goal is to balance these hormones. This, of course, is the goal regardless of whether or not someone is experiencing hair loss. While taking medication might help with the thyroid hair loss, in an autoimmune thyroid condition such as Graves' disease or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, one needs to focus on improving the health of the immune system since this is what is ultimately responsible for the thyroid hormone imbalance. You also want to correct any imbalances of the sex hormones. Many people with Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis have imbalances of the hormones estrogen and progesterone. So if someone has their thyroid hormone levels balanced and they are still losing a lot of hair, then they might want to consider obtaining a hormone panel looking at the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen dominance, which is caused by either too much estrogen and or progesterone deficiency, can lead to hair loss. So if someone has too much estrogen, either from using bioidentical hormones or from frequent exposure to xenoestrogens, then a liver detoxification can help to clear the excess estrogen from the body. If a progesterone deficiency is a problem, then the goal is to correct the deficiency. Many healthcare professionals recommend for their patients with a progesterone deficiency to take natural progesterone. This may help, but it does nothing to address the cause of the progesterone deficiency. Some causes of a progesterone deficiency include weak adrenal glands or communication problems between the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, also known as HP axis dysregulation. Having a deficiency in gamma linolenic acid, also known as GLA, this can also lead to hair loss. Uh, this is why supplements such as evening primrose oil can sometimes help with hair loss black currant seed oil and borage oil or other types of GLA. And it's also a good idea to consume some omega-3 fatty acids as well, as this is something just about everyone can benefit from. And besides get, getting these by eating fish, such as Alaskan wild salmon or tilapia, uh, taking a daily fish oil supplement is recommended. And the reason for this is because due to the toxicity of fish, you want to avoid eating more than a couple of servings of fish per week. Um, although you can minimize your exposure to toxins by eating wild fish, along with fish that are smaller in size, it still is a good idea to minimize your consumption of fish, as all fish are toxic. Now, if you're a vegetarian, you can take flaxseed oil instead of fish oils, but just keep in mind that some people have problems converting alpha-linolenic acid into EPA and DHA. In addition to the factors I discussed so far, which can cause or contribute to hair loss in people with thyroid and autoimmune thyroid conditions, there can be other factors as well. Certain vitamin and mineral deficiencies can lead to hair loss, such as biotin, zinc, and iron, uh, as well as selenium. Uh, sometimes taking too much of a certain mineral can also lead to hair loss, as taking high doses of selenium for prolonged periods of time might cause hair loss in some people. I frequently recommend selenium to many of my patients with these conditions because it has so many benefits, but selenium can also be toxic if taken in high doses for a prolonged period of time. And I personally recommend a whole food selenium supplement to my patients, which greatly minimizes the chances of having a selenium toxicity. Some people have the condition known as alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune disorder that can cause hair loss, and it does this by attacking the hair follicles. Remember that people with one autoimmune condition are likely to develop other autoimmune conditions, and so this is also something to consider. So what should you do if you have Graves' disease or Hashimoto's thyroiditis and are experiencing hair loss? Well, the first thing you should do is to work with an endocrinologist, natural health care professional, or both to help balance the thyroid hormone levels. Obviously, most endocrinologists will try to accomplish this through medication, while many natural health care professionals will try to restore the thyroid health naturally. 
Either way, if balancing the thyroid hormone levels doesn't help, then it probably would be a good idea to evaluate the hormones, estrogen and progesterone. However, since it can be costly to obtain a hormone panel in some people, before someone chooses to do this, another option is to experiment by taking some GLA. As a result, some people who are experiencing hair loss will choose to take evening Primos oil or a different type of GLA. And if this helps with the hair loss, then that's great. And if not, then the person can move on to the hormone testing. And let's not forget that having mineral imbalances can also cause hair loss, and so any mineral deficiency should be corrected. So to, to summarize, thyroid hair loss is common in people with Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. However, the hair loss isn't always caused by the imbalance of the thyroid hormone levels, as other factors can cause hair loss to occur as well. And so those people with these conditions will want to look at some of the causes I discussed in this presentation, especially the first three, as these are common causes of hair loss in people with thyroid and autoimmune thyroid conditions. To receive more natural thyroid health tips, please visit naturalendocrinesolutions.com, where you can get a free guide entitled The Six Steps on How Natural Thyroid Treatments Can Restore Your Health. This guide contains 100% pure content and is not a sales pitch for any product or service. Thanks for watching this presentation.